Uh, before we get started, I do have a, a few announcements. Um, one is we're, uh, you know, if you saw all the decorations out uh, as we're walking in, you know that EPS is happening this week. Um, so I invite you to stick around after the service because we'll be doing some more of that decoration uh, for the, the fun and the joy of the kids. So you're welcome to join us in that. Um, also, invite you to the children's program that will be this Friday at 11.30. Um, we'll just be doing some of the songs that we teach the kids. You know, there will be a lunch afterwards, so you're welcome to join us for that. Um, also, there will be a voters meeting in two Sundays on August 28th. It will be a quick one, just about five minutes. Um, what we're doing at it is just meeting to vote a lay delegate and alternate for a circuit forum, and um, these people could potentially go to the synodical convention. So there will be a vote um, from all of the, the lay delegates in our district uh, coming up soon to see who will then go to that. So, so we just have to nominate a couple people for that. Um, let's see what else. We've got a couple things also from the bulletin I wanted to highlight. Um, just a reminder, because of VBS, the Wednesday Bible study is canceled again, um, because we'll be doing VBS at that time. Um, also, a uh, reminder that August 21st is the starting time for our study titled Approaching LGBTQIA Plus People and Topics. There's a little blurb there in your, your bulletin if you want to look at that. And then um, we have uh, some, some help needed. So if, you, if you're wanting to help the ministry here at Shepherd of the Lake, there are some ways that you can do that. Um, that's on the bottom of page 17 in your bulletin. I think with that, we'll begin with the opening song.
If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, God, have, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank 
hands of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it clearly. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. Am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God, a God afar off? Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, saying, I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there be lies in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart, who think to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, even as their fathers forgot my name for Baal? Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord, is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> and we read the psalm together responsibly, verse by verse. My soul longs for your salvation. I hope in your word. My, My eyes long for your promise. I ask, when, when will you comfort me? For I have become like a wineskin in the smoke. Yet I have not forgotten your statutes. How, How long, long must your servant endure? When will you judge those who persecute me? The insolent have dug pitfalls for me. They do not live according to your law. All your commandments are sure. They persecute me with falsehood. Help me. They have almost made an end of me on earth, but I have not forsaken your precepts. In your steadfast love, give me life, that I may keep the testimonies of your mouth. And our epistle reading comes from Hebrews, the 11th chapter. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaiah invoked future blessings on Jacob and Esau, by faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head of his staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave directions concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's evil. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ's greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as if on dry land. But the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, 
of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were killed with a sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. 
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The gospel lesson you just heard teaches us two things. First, that Jesus came to give division and not peace. And second, that the crowds should have been able to interpret what it was that Jesus had come to do. In this sermon, we'll focus on that first teaching of Jesus, namely that he came to give division and not peace. In our passage, Jesus told the crowds why he had come. As he said, I came to cast fire on the earth. And again, I have a baptism to be baptized with. Now here he wasn't referring to a past baptism, such as when John baptized him. He was referring to a future baptism, one that hadn't yet happened. He noted that he was eager to do what he had come to do. As he said of the fire, would that it were already kindled, and of the baptism, how great is my distress until it is accomplished. So why had Jesus come? Jesus came to save his people. As he said elsewhere, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And what was this fire and baptism? It was the means through which Jesus would save his people. It was his crucifixion. And Jesus wanted this to happen, because through his crucifixion, he would save his people. But in our passage, Jesus also warned that his crucifixion would divide the most intimate of connections. As he said, do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For those who would believe in his crucifixion would be divided from those who did not believe and who rejected Jesus. And this division would even happen in households. As Jesus said, they will be divided. Father against son and son against father. Mother against daughter and daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against daughter-in-law. And daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Some of us are surprised by this truth. You hear Jesus say, do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? And you answer, yes, Jesus, I do think that. After all, isn't Jesus the Prince of Peace? His place, the place of peace, his greeting, peace be to you, and that of his apostles, grace and peace, and that of your very own pastor in this sermon, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you. Well, this is true. Jesus did come to give peace. But in this passage, he teaches us that his peace is divisive. <coughs> For those who believe in Jesus, his peace is salvation at the cross. But that same peace causes division among those who reject Jesus. Others of us are heartbroken by this truth. You hear Jesus say, do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? And you say, no, believing in you, Jesus, has caused a lot of division in my family and among those who have rejected you. You believe in Jesus, but others don't. You want to come to church, they don't. You want to come to Bible study, you want to pray, and they sometimes ridicule you for it. Many of these people you dearly love they're close to you, and you don't want any conflict with them. You also dearly love Jesus. And when you live out your Christian faith, the same crucifixion that gives you peace causes division among those who have rejected Jesus and his crucifixion. So whether we're surprised or heartbroken by Jesus' truth, none of us understands why some believe and others don't. 
And we're tempted to blame God for this division. But Jesus has put the responsibility on the believer. As he has said elsewhere, whoever does not believe is condemned. So whether we're surprised or heartbroken by Jesus' device of peace, his teaching challenges us because none of us understand why some believe and others don't. So how did Jesus encourage his disciples in the midst of this challenging teaching? First, he taught them this reality before it happened. And this comforted them because it meant that every time the peace Jesus gave them caused division among those who rejected him. It was evidence of Jesus' faithfulness to his word because his word happened just as he said while his disciples didn't understand, it showed that Jesus did understand what he was getting into. He decided to save us. Because he said it beforehand, no disciple of Jesus needs to be surprised when the peace that he gives to us can cause division among those who reject Jesus. Second, it's no insignificant matter that Jesus was eager to be crucified. By being eager, he showed his disciples that the purpose for which he came was good. Though they may not have understood it, it was something Jesus desired to accomplish. There's a reason he wanted to be crucified. It's because through his crucifixion, he would save some save those who would believe. And to save some is better than saving none. But what about our heartbreak and lack of understanding of Jesus' device of peace? Sometimes all we can do is consider Jesus. But consider this from his perspective. He understood far better than any of us the heartbreaking division that would come when people reject his saving work. His father's plan was for salvation, but those who rejected it would cause division. Yet Jesus never turned from his father's plan to save you. And on the cross, Jesus saw that division came out of the peace he gave there. He said the words that give you and I such deep peace because we believe. As he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But just after these same words that give us peace, there was division for those who rejected him. As the rulers said, he saved others, and he saved himself. You know he could have saved himself. But he didn't, because he was there to save you, to save me. When the two criminals were crucified beside Jesus, he saw that the vision came from the peace he gave there. For one of the criminals rejected his peace and said, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal there believed in Jesus. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And despite the one criminal's rejection of Jesus and his cross, that same cross gave peace to the one who believed. Can you imagine Jesus' heartbreak at that moment? Jesus loved the whole world. He wanted all to be saved. But his crucifixion was rejected then, and is rejected still today. So for those of us who are heartbroken and loved ones reject Jesus, Jesus walks with us in that heartbreak. Jesus understood well your heartbreak. He said that division would come out of the peace he gives. I don't understand why Jesus died but only some would believe in him. But it sure shows us his great love for we who believe. For despite all his suffering, for the sake of those who reject him, he 
Jesus gladly suffered because he knew it would save you. Jesus gladly suffered because he had you in mind. He knew that you would be saved by his suffering because you would believe. By the grace of God, Jesus gives you peace in his cross. Therefore, as his saved people, I urge you to trust the peace Jesus gives in his cross, even when others reject that same peace. So what does this look like? What does it look like to trust Jesus' peace, even when others reject it? Instead of being surprised when it happens, can see Jesus' faithfulness to his word. When others reject him, there will be division, just as he said. And instead of facing your heartbreaking division alone, cling to Jesus, who walks with you. Finally, we can pray for help. So let's do that together. I'll say a few words, and then you can repeat it back. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father, Jesus' heart breaks. Jesus' heart breaks. When others reject him. When others reject him. Our hearts break too. Our hearts break too. Help us to trust. Help us to trust. The peace that Jesus gives. The peace that Jesus gives. Even when others. Even when others reject. Reject that same peace. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which truly surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. We rise and confess our Christian faith in the words of the 19th Peace. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all the worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and solid church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, our fathers in the faith, Lord of hosts, you inspired your servant Jeremiah to proclaim your word amid the lies of false prophets. Arm your servants in our day with the power of your Holy Spirit to contradict the lies of the enemy and build up your church upon the eternal foundation of your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, you settle the solitary in families in order to nurture their faith and train them in righteousness. Bless and strengthen parents to bring up their children to resist temptation and to endure all things for the sake of your name. Lord, we also ask that you would strengthen the faith of those who are single. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God Almighty, behold our nation and all those in authority in your mercy. 
and replenish them by your grace, that all who receive the sword would bear it according to your word, always inclining to your will and walking in your way. Grant that we might lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, grant healing to the sick. We especially lift up Tim and Marcy and Darlene, Sheila, Bonnie, Dennis and Libby, Millie, Dolores, Merle, Cindy's mom, Stanley, and we ask that you would also grant strength to the weak, endurance to bear up under trial, patience to await God's deliverance and peace at the last. We also ask that you would strengthen those who have lost loved ones, especially the Shasau and the Nelson family. Grant them the hope of your son's resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, your son promises division even as he promises salvation. Inspire our hearts to prize our baptism and the communion of the saints above all other relations in this world, even as we fervently pray and strive for the salvation of those we know and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our fathers, you bless your church with the enduring witness of your saints who now rest from their labors. As we join their heavenly communion in our Lord's Supper, grant that we would share their faith in Christ, now and to life's end. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Hear us, most merciful Father, in these our humble requests, which we offer unto you in the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And at this time, um, we have a plate at the back for, for offerings, so if you happen to forget to put it in, you can go put it in now or um, at the end of the service. Um, also, I just want to um, invite those who perhaps do not uh, believe as we do here and are not members of the Missouri Synod, that when we move into the service of the sacrament, if you would come forward and just take a cross over your chest like this. I'd still like to welcome you forward and I'll give you a blessing. So with that, we'll, uh, we'll sing our next song.
you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to the Lord. the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, the holy, holy Lord, God of Sabbath and of the door, and hand earth and full of way, shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name. Trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Jesus bless you and keep you. Please rise for the singing of the home.
forgot or anything that someone thought of um, during the service. <laughs> Well, I, I again invite you to stick around and help decorate for VBS, and um, especially to pray throughout this week for the children. Um, God bless your week. It's good to see you all.